Turning now to the auto industry, General Motors approving a new $6 billion share repurchase program today. The company's CFO, Paul Jacobson, attributing the move to strong revenue growth, margins, and cash flow. Joining us live from Deutsche Bank's Global Auto Industry Conference in New York City, we have the man himself, General Motors Chief Financial Officer, Paul Jacobson, alongside Yahoo Finance's Pros Subramanian. Hey, Pros, take it away. Hey, thanks, Brad. Yeah, here with the man, Paul Jacobson, GM CFO. You just announced, Brad, talking about that new $6 billion share repurchase plan. And this is in, on top of the $10 billion you guys did at the ASR at the end of last year. So what sort of kind of, what's the, what's the story here between GM and now there's a lot of cash return to shareholders? Yeah, well, thanks for the time uh, today. We're excited to be here at the conference and uh, share, the, share the big news, which is we're continuing to lean into our capital allocation policy. And as the business has continued to perform and we've seen stable pricing, we've seen disciplined incentives uh, from our team, and we've seen a vehicle portfolio that is uh, customers just love. And uh, all that spells a lot of success. So we're able to invest in the business. We're able to maintain a strong balance sheet and we're able to return cash to shareholders. So we've completed uh, that uh, uh, private prior uh, buyback authorization that we had done and pleased to announce that the board has just authorized another $6 billion uh, in share repurchases that will commence beginning in the uh, second half of uh, 2024. Yeah, and, and you guys also boosted the dividend at the end of last year. Yep. Uh, so you know, a lot of big news from a capital sort of return point, point of view. I think investors here at this Deutsche Bank conference, happy to see that. <laughs> but talk about the business too, what sort of the evolution they're going on right now as we as 2024 kind of the halfway point here uh, EV sales ramping up, ICE sales still strong. What's going on with the mix there exactly? So, you know, we've seen, um, we've actually seen EV growth moderate a little bit this year for the industry, but GM's EV growth is outpacing everybody. We're picking up significant share. Uh, we sold over 9,500 EVs in North America last month. Um, so seeing really strong gains in the Lyric, in the Blazer. Really excited about the game-changing Equinox EV, which will be the lowest price 300 mile range uh, vehicle on the market in the EV space. And that's just starting to now get Get momentum uh, as we see going forward. So uh, we're starting to execute uh, really, really well uh, in the EV space and seeing that ramp up. And the ICE uh, portfolio with the new Traverse, um, uh, the new Equinox, those vehicles, not only are customers really flocking to them, but they're also more profitable than the, the mm -hmm. older models that they've replaced as well. So the business is really performing well. You know, you talk about cars like the, 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 the Trax, uh, a, a cheaper car that you guys can build affordably. What about that Equinox EV? It's, that's going to be a, a, a mainstream EV. You guys are trying to target a, a profit metric at the end of this year. Is that still in play for EVs? Yeah, so what we've said is, um, you know, we expect to produce 200 to 300,000 EVs this year, and we can be variable profit positive. So mm -hmm. this means that we can, we can sell it for more than the cost of the materials and start to offset all of our fixed costs. We believe that we can be in that position in our whole EV fleet by the end of this year and guarding, uh, gating the way to become uh, profitable on an EBIT basis in 2025 and beyond. What about PHEVs and hybrids? I know, you know, the Corvette E-Ray is out there. We were talking about that earlier. It's a great <laughs> car, amazing performance. But are we going to see that technology trickle down to the the more entry-level cars. When are we going to see those EVs come out? Or so we, we've, come out? we've talked about adding a plug-in hybrid or a PHEV um, beginning in 2027. Mm -hmm. um, we see this as a pretty valuable tool for us to help bridge compliance against EV adoption. So for those customers who down the road aren't yet comfortable with EVs, a plug-in hybrid is a great option to sort of get that additional range extension, plus still have the backup of, of an ICE engine um, for road trips, et cetera. So we think that this can be a really good tool to help some of those skeptics bridge into EVs for the long term. But when you look at our portfolio of battery electric vehicles, it's, it's really is compelling what we're able to offer in terms of style, range, and capability. And have the kind of capability to sort of augment that with PHEVs and hybrids down the line. Uh, looking big picture at the business, we're at the conference here. You're going to be talking to some investors so shortly about that. Um, what are some of the kind of key highlights you want to note for 2024 and beyond and sort of like the, you know, your adjusted EBIT kind of mark, uh, targets, things like that. Yeah, so, you know, we came out um, at the beginning of the year and talked about 12 to 14 um, uh, uh, billion dollars of EBIT and we were able to raise that guidance uh, at the end of the first quarter based on the outperformance. And the business is continuing to perform very, very consistently for us. So we've always taken a very sort of um, stable view uh, in terms of what we're trying to do with incentives, with inventory levels, and uh, the, 
the team's been uh, really strong at executing that. And the vehicles, customers love them. And that's, that's where it all starts. If you don't build products that customers want, then the big business becomes much, much more challenging to run. But um, our design team, our engineering team has, uh, has created a portfolio of vehicles that customers just, uh, just adore. Well, the, yeah, the customers, so the US customers in particular, you know, we hear a lot about they're doing well, they're not doing well, prices are high. What's sort of your 500 foot or 30,000 foot view of the, of the US customer for GM? How are they, how are they, what are they telling you guys? Um, our, our customers have, have responded really well and they've maintained that strength. Um, you know, many times when you're looking at full size trucks, full size SUVs, we're still seeing people adopt premium trim levels uh, and that, that business has been strong. Um, but you look at the resiliency of our portfolio all the way down to the Chevy Trax that you mentioned. I mean, this is an incredible vehicle that starts at $20,000. So um, that's, I think, one of the keys to GM success is that portfolio that has something for everybody across all of the different uh, price points that they might be looking for.